So again, usually Tuesdays are buyer side of the transaction, but I just want to kind of have a free for all Tuesday. So um, yeah, Mike. Yeah, I'll see you get the ball rolling. I uh, met some uh, buyers at an open house the other day, and they saw a house I think they really like it. But they have a house to sell, mm -hmm. and it's not ready to go. Okay. And I'm just curious, I mean, I know of such things as contingent offers, and I know they're not terribly popular, especially in a strong market. Mm -hmm. But any uh, advice on how to proceed with that? Because I, I think they probably have to sell it in order to all right. I don't know. Let's open it up to the group first. What do you guys, how would you guys handle that? Ask them first. I'm pretty sure I did. I said yes. I haven't checked my notes. Have you seen the house? How far away from being ready is it? Uh, well, there's a couple things that are primary issues. The house is just cluttered to death. So it needs to get cleaned out, probably needs painted. Uh, it depends on what price they want to shoot for, too. If they sell it as is, it's, you know, here, you do a little work, it's here. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's probably at least a month out, at least, I would think. Okay. So, they like this house, they might be interested in putting an offer in, but they still have a house to sell and it's Correct. not really market ready yet. Yes. Okay. So, you be them for a second, okay? Mike, if there was somebody there who was interested in your house and you didn't have to fix it up, would you be? Uh, what do you mean? Well, what kind of price are we talking about? I, I'm mean, at the price acceptable to you. But if there was somebody out there that said, no, 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 don't do anything, we're going to fix it up the way we want to, and the price was acceptable to you, would you be willing to sell it to them? Yes. Okay. Great. Well. That's that's what we throw our line out in the water. If I throw a line out in the water with a hook on it, even if there's no bait, I got a chance of a fish swimming by and catching its tail on it, right? <laughs> but if the line's not in the water at all, then I've got to hope that the fish jumps up into the boat, and that's, that's even less likely. So I guess my suggestion is that we go ahead and get the house on the market and you can do improvements to it over time, but we might get lucky. We also have an instant offers program. Are you familiar with that? No, I'm not. Oh, great. Well, that's an investment division that we work with that will make an as-is cash offer on your home. So I'll submit your property to them for an offer too once we get it on the market. Sound good? Sure. So we've got all these different options, and if none of those work, then you can be working on getting the house market ready while we go through that process. But, like, would you sell your house now market and somebody wanted to buy it, but they needed to sell their house? Would you consider that offer? No. Yeah, I wouldn't either. Make sense? Yes, sir. Good. Sign here. <laughs> What else is going on with guys? Open mic Tuesday. <clears throat> I'm the only real estate group in Atlanta that doesn't have any issues or problems going on right now. Everybody has more business than they want. Everybody, everybody, does anybody have, is, is anybody not full? Okay, great. So is that an issue? So we're just being shy today. Yes. You're, you don't want me to pick on you today. Good. Well, let me just pick on you anyhow. Okay. So, Margaret. I'm working in this one state, and I, she had lived here previously, and she claimed that she wanted to look in a certain area. Well, we looked in that area, and now she looked in the map. Mm -hmm. How do I put this woman in check? You probably don't. Well, well, Margaret, you're an Uber driver with a lockbox pad. Yeah, you're right about that. There we go. All right, John. <laughs> so, realistic expectation, what's the average home buyer cycle in the U.S.? 405 days. 405 days, okay. So, Wait, where are you in that 405 day cycle? I'm probably in, in at about 35 days. Okay, well, that's a long way to do this. You only have 370 days now. <laughs> But she wants to move before the holidays. 
Okay. Of this year? Yeah. Of this year. The way she's going, it might not be. Okay. So she does want to be in before which holiday? Uh, she might like be in before Thanksgiving. Okay, great. Well, then, Margaret, to be in by Thanksgiving, as you know, it's probably a 30, 45 day closing process at least. So that means we need to have you, your home identified and under contract no later than probably the middle of October. So we have two more weeks. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. So where would you like to look for homes? Well, I don't want to be too close to my family because they can just drop by. And I don't want to be too far because they won't visit. And I did used to live over here, but... What's too close? Uh, where they can see your car and they have to drive more than 30 minutes. Her family is all over the map, too. So, Margaret, I had a builder tell me one time that the perfect house has never been built. Do you agree with that? Yeah. yeah. So, of all those things, which is the most important to you? Getting the house I want. Okay. So and how about location? Closer well, to I, work? I'm retired, so I, I really don't have to worry about that. Okay, great. So, ideally, where would you prefer to live? Well, after seeing my, uh, the houses last night, I think I want to live in Coming, uh, Coving, what's that place? Covington. 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 Yeah. Okay, great. Great. So, can we focus in on the Covington area? Would that be okay? Sure. Okay, great. So, let's just put our focus and attention on that because we really only have two, maybe three weeks at the most. Uh, now, something that could really help. Um, have you already met with Greg and gotten your mortgage application started? Well, I have my own lender. You have your own Who is that? Uh, it's Evergreen. Okay, great. And how did you choose them? Well, it was a referral from a friend. My family member used them before, and he does VA loans. Okay, great. And how many homes has your family member bought? Well, between all of my sisters and brothers, I'd say over 20. So but not all here. Oh, different okay. different areas, different states. Oh, okay. So they've used this lender on all no. of them? No. Uh, how many do, how many times have they used this lender? Well my sister's used it once. Once. Mm -hmm. oh, and she had a good experience. Yeah. Okay. That's good. Good for her. But I don't want to give all my paperwork over again. I don't want to have to collect all that stuff and hand it out. Great. So you know why I ask? Did you know that buying a home is a top five stress event in people's lives? Really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, the people that do this, it always ranks up there in the top five. Is that like crazy to you? Well, yeah. yeah. It is to me too, because buying a home should be fun. It's not so bad. I mean, I, I drive up and I say, you know, uh, maybe a week or so, and I go back, and then I come back, and spend, and I can just get some time to relax on the road, so it's not so bad. Yeah. So, I'm pretty fanatical about making sure that my customers have a good experience, mm -hmm. and finding the home, what you and I do, is fun. This mortgage process is brutal, okay? And this is a business full of scallywax. And they will promise you everything up front and deliver almost nothing. And that's where the stress is. Can you imagine? I mean, I had this happen recently. Family, you find the home you want. You start telling everybody. You start making plans to move in. You get movers lined up. You get utilities. You change your address. You register to vote. You're doing all this. You're posting on Facebook. You're telling all your family members. And the lender's not ready to close. That happens a lot. Happens all the time. That's why it's a top five stress event. And that's why I'm so fanatical about it, because I don't want that to happen to you. So what we've done with it to, what we've done as a consequence is we've developed a relationship with a reputable bank. And if they mess you up, they're gonna lose all of our business. So as a consequence, they don't. Would it be worth your time just to speak to Greg and compare? Okay, I guess I could do that. Say no. No. It wouldn't be. No. Even if Greg could save you time and money, it 
would be worth well, your effort. Well, you know, I'm already qualified for a VA loan, and, you know, I, I've got debt credit, and I, I have a piece of retirement, debt retirement, so I, I don't see why it's going to be a problem. Okay. Then what I need you to do, because we're running up against the deadline, I need you to get completely approved with that lender. All they need, all that needs to be left is an appraisal and a contract. Will you do that? I'll consider it. Okay. I'll talk to my sister. So I feel that you're a little resistant here. Well, you know, uh, I, my, my sister, she had good, 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 good results with that, and, and uh, I'm comfortable. I've met him, and, you know, I'm, I'm comfortable. Well, Margaret, good luck. I'm not comfortable, and I am not willing to participate in a nightmare transaction with somebody to the extent that if you won't even be willing to speak with a trusted source or get to the approval status, then um, I don't want to participate in that bad situation with you. So I wish you the best, but I only want to work with serious about buying loans and allow me to help. I am serious, but I think I should be able to buy my own lender if I agree if I want to. I don't have a problem with you finding your own lender. Okay. What I have a problem with is you having a nightmare experience. So if you want to work with this evergreen people that I've never heard of, mm -hmm. you know, okay. But what I want you to do is pursue it to full approval status right now before we find the home. You said you wanted to be in by Thanksgiving. In order for that to happen, you need to be under contract in the next two to three weeks, and your loan needs to be almost done. What do you mean by almost done? I mean, all we need is a contract and an appraisal done. Okay. But I don't feel like you agree with me. Well, um, I'll talk to my sister. Okay. We, well, we discuss everything. I wish you the best. Good luck. Folks, so I want another deal. I don't need one. If you're not going to let me help you, if you're not going to listen to me, if you're not going to treat this as a serious transaction, if you just want to go out shopping for homes and you don't want to do any of the financial stuff until you find a home and you won't listen to reason, I don't have time to work and drive you all over God's green earth. I do not. That is not what I'm here for. Now, I've tried to give you a number of reasons why I need you to listen to me and you don't want to hear it. I got to go. Now, what Margaret's position is, is it's not you personally. She's in a weak position. And she's in a weak position because she needs the deal. And you are willing to chase it and hope that it closes. Okay, then when it doesn't, when this lender turns out to be a scallywag, when she's unreasonable with her home inspection, when she's unreasonable with her negotiating term, you do not get to complain. You do not. Because right now, you're saying, I know all that stuff is possible, maybe even likely, given the prospect I'm working with, and I'm going to chase it anyhow, because it's all I got. Then you forfeit your rights to complain about it. And if you say that's fine, that's, then I say that's fine. Then chase it. But when what you knew would happen happens, you have to just own it and say, yeah, I knew this was possible. And I drove this woman around forever and all that stuff. And I don't get to be a victim now because I chose it. Right? And if it's a conscious decision on your part, I don't have any problem with it at all. Do y'all? Anybody disagree? Sure. I don't disagree. I was just going to ask a question kind of off of that. Um, you know how you always jokingly say, you know, you got to take some of the nerve before you ask them how to break their eggs in the morning, and, and we should not rush into that conversation with people. Can I make, have it noted that Shelly's the one making the inappropriate analogy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad I cited my source. <laughs> so, no, no. <laughs> um, that being said, at what point when people are being uh, flaky, like, because I've had people deal with that where you ask them about a pre-approval or you ask them what lender they're going to, and they're like, oh yeah, I'll send you that, I'll send you that. At what point do you put your foot down and draw the line between, 
you know, calling next because they're giving you the runaround or assume that you're potentially asking them how to want their eggs. But I have spoken with the lender. They are, uh, she's pre-approved. Uh, she's got a decent schedule credit score. She does make a decent income. And she can qualify for up to 400 down. She's going on the low end, but she herself is completely. So let's do this. So we have an expert in the room, right? What questions should Margaret ask that the lender could answer? First thing I, the first thing that I would ask is, did they, did, have you reviewed all of the supporting documents to the application? Okay. And obviously you're looking for a yes answer there. That's correct. And if, they, if they say, well, I've reviewed some of them, which ones did you not review? Next one. What, 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 let's get supporting this. documents. I need income supporting documents, okay. whether it's pay stubs, if she's retired, so, you know, whatever her pension or Social Security, whatever that is, we need to, you know, have you seen the benefits letters so that you know that that's the income that's on there. Um, second question I would ask is, did you run it through AUS, Automated Underwriting Service? Or Automated Underwriting System, AUS. And did you receive an accept eligible? Didn't you have this written out somewhere? I thought I had seen this. What's that? Don't you have these questions written out somewhere? Oh, I do. We've got a sheet. I can send it out. I think I've sent it out, but I'll send it to you. It's got it's a whole page of every one of these questions. Yeah. Um, uh, did you let's see supporting documents? Uh, yes. Did you complete the verification of employment? That's one that you'll oftentimes get a no on because they haven't yet. That usually happens after, but you're asking them if they've got a verification of employment. Now, in this case, she's retired, so you know, they're not going to have um, they're not going to have that. One. What is the time frame from the time that we go binding to the time of when we submitted into underwriting? How long does that process take? Is How, what, what is that? What is the time frame? What number would we be happy to hear? Anywhere inside of two weeks. And will you submit the loan to underwriting without the appraisal? Some lenders will not send it in without the appraisal. That's a mistake because we're waiting on that appraisal. We're waiting on ordering that appraisal until such time as the inspection is done. So there's and then I'm asking who's the person I should be in touch with when they're, when, you know, after, after we go by, who's the person I should be in touch with and what's the best way for me to reach you? It's all on that Chief Jones' reference. Phone, text, email, and what is the potential time for turnaround? Now, I can tell you this. If you take that sheet and you ask those questions, you just, what will happen, you'll know immediately if that's a lender that you want to work with or not want to work with. Because if they find any of it offensive, you've got a problem. What would be a reason why a lender would be reluctant to answer any of those four or five questions? Uh, in the case of USAA, Navy Federal, Wells Fargo, Chase, they are not allowed to give out any information. Nothing of what I set up here is confidential. Nothing. But they're not allowed to give out any information. Right? And that's that's a problem if I'm if I'm a Mike where he takes that much concern for having the right deal, then having everything go smoothly, that's a problem. So here's I can't I would, then I would go back to you, the customer, and I would say, I had a conversation with your lender. I asked them four or five questions that don't violate any privacy law, and they could answer if they wanted to, if they were unwilling to. This makes me feel very uncomfortable and worried for you. So what I would like to recommend is that you speak with the lender that I work with so that we make sure you don't have any traumatic consequences during this own buying process. But this gets down to how you want to run your business. 
There's four or five questions you can ask a lender which don't violate privacy laws. Right? The lender could answer it if they, if they wanted to. They don't want to. Okay? That's like what we talk about with offer submission. You submit an offer. I'd like to see a bank statement that you have your down payment in an account already. What's the big deal? You know what the big deal is? They'll have it. The people that don't want to give it to you will say, well, I find that offensive. You know, if you had a lot of money in the bank, you wouldn't find it offensive. Right. You'd be glad to share it with me. You, the people that don't have it. Here's what I say to Margaret and to everybody else. You get to choose. It's your business, and you get to choose who you do and don't want to work with. In those situations, you have all the warning signs going off. You have a customer that's not listening to your advice and guidance, who is working with the lender who won't be open and communicative with you. You don't have a right to complain now. If you go forward to that person, you are doing it consciously or unconsciously, assuming the risk. So if you assume the risk and you lose, you can't. There's nobody to be mad at. You said, I knew this was possible, and it turned out to be true. Next, <coughs> too often, too often in our industry, we don't do that. We'll chase it, and then we walk around acting like the victims of the world when things did happen, but we didn't, we didn't ask the questions up front. Why would you be willing to drive people all over Atlanta if they don't answer your questions? Can you imagine if I went to see my doctor this afternoon, Dr. Arndt, girls, Dr. Arndt's a good looking dude, he's George Clooney with the lines. Where is Dr. Arndt? <laughs> <laughs> and I go in to see Dr. Arndt, and he's like, Arndt, my arm hurts. Just give me some, what was that? Vicodins. Oh man, that's some good stuff. I, I want some more of that. He's like, well, no, I got to ask you, look, Tell me, where's it hurt? When's it hurt? How often? <coughs> Did you have a and don't worry about it. Just give me the medication. What would you say to a doctor who just wrote the prescription and said, okay, well, you seem to know what you're doing, so here's your prescription for what you said you wanted. Good doctor or bad doctor? Bad doctor. Good real estate agent, bad real estate agent. If the customer's running the show and isn't reasonable with you, and you agree to go along with it. Okay, your choice. Okay. Mike has a transaction going right now that he and I are working on. And we pre approved the person up front. And when they wrote the offer, the listing agent called me and did what you were just describing. The listing agent called me. And I just took out my letter questionnaire and I went right down the questionnaire and gave her every answer and then I forwarded her that lender questionnaire. Her comment at the end of the call, even before she got the questionnaire, her comment was, she says, so this guy is solid. I said, trust me, if you can find someone who's more solid than this, I said, it's a cash buyer and you're giving you their bank statement. She said, thank you. I'm under contract in 24 hours. That's the power of having that piece done and insisting on it. I mean, and that's not that's one example. I mean, there's some of you do that. I mean, it's just whoever it is, but that's that. So let's take it just a second and talk about Margaret's own buyers. <clears throat> Other than because it's good business practice for Margaret, why does her home buyer want to get completely pre approved? Why does she want to, even though she might not know? Well, because it's very, well, I don't, the price of mine right now is very, very competitive. You're competing with cash. So, so could it be a negotiating tool? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, if you try to tell the home buyer, they won't, they, nobody's listening to what we tell them. Right. So, what if you did something like this? So, Margaret, when we find that perfect house, okay, great, then I need you to help me. I need you to be as approved as you can get, really all the way to the point where your lender's saying, just give me a contract and let's order an appraisal and we're ready to go. And then I can use that to help negotiate to help you get the best deal possible. 
many, many, many times, maybe always, in sales, if you want somebody to do something, you need to point out to them, help them understand why it's to their benefit. Have them answer their own. Not why it's to your benefit or what your policies and procedures are because you say so, but because they go, oh, so if I do this, it'll help me get what I want. Right. And when people can draw that connection, they're more likely to do it. And when they don't, you won't need me. If you will do this, and I will, let's finish with this, and I will beg you to hear this. If you don't ever hear anything, hear this. If you will work on your marketing activities every day, every day, five days a week, where you're marketing yourself consistently, every day, then when you have people that you need to cut loose, you won't ever have to ask anybody. You'll just know because you'll have, Jay, how's this week look for you, Jay? Rough. Rough. And, what, and when you say rough, I counted up somewhere between 20 and 30 some transactions that you need to put under contract by the end of the month. True story. You think Jay's putting up with any bullshit in the next seven days? No. <laughs> Jay literally has to put 30 properties under contract in the next 10 days. Oh. Right. She's not putting up with any bullshit from anybody. It's giddy up time. Right? Uh -huh. Jay, you don't have anything to do. You have no prospects, no customers, nothing going on. You got nothing but time on your hands. It's different. So if you will just do the marketing activities every day, you'll you'll cut people loose. You'll naturally know it. You'll just go, well, I got time for this. Like if you're not going to play ball reasonably with me, I got no time for this. And folks, it's everything in this business. It is. Is the difference between this being the greatest job ever had in your life and pouring tar on the highway sounds better. Because <laughs> this job can either really, really suck and be very stressful and you can go broke, you can bankrupt yourself doing this. Or it being like, I can't ever imagine doing anything else. And you get to decide which way it is for you just by the activities that you complete every day. And this is why I'm begging you. I know you can work from home. I get it. I know we can. We just don't. And you need to get in. You need to get into an atmosphere where there's some accountability and there's some peer pressure from the others in the room and there's some synergy going on. Where if you're not feeling terror, if you're not feeling that motivated today, maybe Brandon is, and maybe you can feed off him a little bit, or maybe you heard something in the room today. Maybe Greg just gave you something that you could use in your business, and maybe you heard it before, but it didn't resonate with you like it did today. And that all comes from putting yourself in the environment. Mike Fury used to say to us this, and he's right. He's a total asshole, but he's still right about a couple of things. There's two rules to sales. Like there's two reasons. I think he makes it two all the time because we're real estate agents and he's trying to keep it really simple for us. <laughs> there's just two guys. There's two rules to sales. Show up. Show up and ask for the business. Showing up, just put yourself in a, just like where something could bump into you today and happen. I got a friend of mine in Calgary, and she runs her business out of a coffee shop. Why? Because she said, nobody's ever knocked on the door of my condo and wanted to buy or sell a house. So, but they're in coffee. She just puts herself in an environment where somebody could literally bump into her and something happens. Shows up. Ask for the business. That's just your marketing activities, however you market yourself. Putting it out there and allowing people to know what you do for a living those two things every day, you won't ever have to wonder what to do with a difficult customer. You'll just know. But you have got to show up and you've got to ask for the business every day. And so much 
tools and technology available to us where literally we could run our business sitting on a beach side. There's nothing you couldn't do here that you could do at a, you couldn't do at a beach. Sitting in a chair out there drinking a Corona beer or something. We just wouldn't do it. And I think it's really hurting us now. We have so much available to us that we're we're buying into a lot of myths. Or I have this, and I do too, I have this great office at home. Personally, I don't get shit done there. But I do have a very, it's a very nice room. If you walked in, you go, oh, that's nice. And I go, yeah, you must spend a lot of time in here. No, I really don't. I don't do anything here. Every weekend, I take on this big stack of stuff. Maybe you're like me. Sunday night, it goes back to the briefcase to bring back to work on Monday night. Right, right. And Sunday night, I'll put stuff together. I'm like, I didn't do shit. I didn't do anything. I brought Friday, I took it all off. I'm like, I'm motivated Mike, baby. We're going to crank some stuff out this weekend. No, I didn't do anything. Okay, we good? Yeah. Excellent.